In today's video, we're going to go over a complete introduction to all the terms, definitions, and equations that you're going to need for your studies in rotational motion. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe and support my channel. And in addition, I've made a bunch of other teaching learning materials, which you can find my Teachers Pay Teachers website. Whether you're looking for notes for your studies, where you're looking for practice problems, examples with all the solutions, and some very interesting activities that you can do with PATT interactive simulations, and their online labs. You can find all that at my Teachers Pay Teachers store. The link is in the description below, and we can get started now with rotational motion, and we're gonna start with arc length and angular displacement. And this is what we're gonna say. We are gonna say that we have this circle here, and the circle has a centered O, and it has this orange circle right here, and we're gonna place an object right there at A, and we're gonna say that that object is gonna be moving in that, counterclockwise direction to point B. And when it does that, it moves through that arc length S. S is the symbol we use for the arc length. And we can then draw a line from O, the center of the circle, out to A. And then that would be our um, radius for that circle. And then we can have another line from the center of the circle out to B. That is also a radius of that circle. And then you can see when that object moves from point A to point B across that arc length S, it's also going to sweep out and move through that angle theta. That is the Greek letter theta. And the Greek letter theta is the th symbol that we use for the angular displacement or angular measurements for rotational motion. Now, you can see we have the arc length. The arc length is S. That's this distance that the object moves, it's just the symbol S. And we measure that in meters, and that has, of course, the abbreviation M. The angular displacement we just designate as the change in the angle, delta theta. And for rotational motion, most often you're going to be making your angle measurements in radians, not degrees, and you can abbreviate that as RAD like that. So that's the arc length and the angular displacement. Now we can talk about the velocity, the tangential and the angular velocity. The tangential velocity is simply the distance that the object travels along that arc length divided by the time it takes. Now you might remember from the definition for velocity, it's really the change in position over change in time. The change in the position would be the distance, the straight line all the way across here. Now we don't want that because we have a circular motion on the circle, so we're interested in how far the object travels along that circle. What is the arc length? So really when we calculate this, really we're calculating the speed of the object, but we still use the symbol V, and we often call it the tangential velocity, although you can also call it the speed of the object as it moves across that distance in a certain amount of time. That's going to be measured in meters per second. Now, we often call it tangential velocity because when an object is moving in a circular path, its velocity is tangent to the curve. Okay, so for example, at point B, the velocity vector points in that direction. All right? Now, for the angular velocity, angular velocity is how fast the angle is changing over time. The angular velocity, we give the symbol omega. This is not a W. This is the Greek letter omega, and that is simply the change in the angle over the change in time. And we're going to measure that in radians per second. The angle is measured in radians, of course, and the time is in seconds, and we get radians per second like that. Okay, now, before we go on and talk about acceleration, I think it's interesting to point out if we have a smaller circle with a smaller radius, a shorter radius here, the orange one, and we have a bigger circle with the longer, larger radius, that red one here, the object is going to be moving from A to B across that arc length. Well, if we use the larger circle from A prime to B prime, then obviously that arc length is greater than that. So we can say that the arc lengths are different and S prime is going to be greater. But if that was to do that in the same amount of time from A to B, and then from A prime to B prime, the time was equal, then you could see that this object on the prime circle would be moving at a greater velocity, a greater distance over the same amount of time. So the velocity of this object, the speed of this object, would be greater than this one from A to B. But you'll notice that the angular velocities are the same because they sweep out the same angle. The angle is not dependent upon the radius of the circle, but the velocity of the object is, of course, dependent upon that circle or the size of the circle.
Okay, so I think that's just interesting to point out to, between the, the distance, uh, relationship between the velocities uh, that are different and the angular velocities that are the same. Okay, now we can talk about the acceleration. Okay, tangential and uh, uh, angular acceleration. Now, for the tangential acceleration, it's just the a, a for uh, uh, acceleration, and it's just the change in the velocity over change in time, which is the final minus the initial over the change in time for the velocities, and you get that in meters per second squared. For the angular acceleration, it's basically the same kind of thing, except now for the angular acceleration, we give it the symbol alpha, that's the Greek letter alpha, and it's just the change in the angular velocity over change in time, which is the final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity over the change in time, and you get meters per second, excuse me, you get radians per second squared in this case, like that. Okay, so those were the three kind of definitions that you kind of know, know about, the, 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 the displacement, uh, excuse me, the uh, arc length, and then the velocities, and then the accelerations. And now we can go back and go on and derive some of the equations that we're going to find useful for our rotational motion calculations. Okay, we're first going to talk about the relationship between the arc length and the angular displacement. Okay, this is the arc length, this is the angular displacement through which that object moves, and if you know the angular displacement, you can calculate the arc length simply by multiplying the radius in meters, okay, times the angular displacement in radians. You have to remember that this radius has to be measured in meters, and this angular displacement has to be measured in radians, meters and radians, and then when you do that, you will get the arc length in meters. So this is the equation that we use to relate the arc length to the angular displacement. Okay, the next interesting equation is the relationship between the tangential velocity and the angular velocity. And we're going to start this equation out by saying that we can calculate the angle in radians through which that object moves if we simply divide the arc length in meters divided by the radius in meters, then you will get the change in the angle in, in radians, okay? So this is how we're going to start deriving our equation that shows us the relationship for these two things up here. Now, to do that, I am going to first divide both sides of that equation by t, by the time, okay? And then I get the angle over time, and if I divide this side by t, then I get s over r times t. When I divide this fraction by t, the t flips up here into the denominator, and I get s over r times t. Well, on the left side of this equation, you can see this is the angle divided by the time, the angle through which it moves over time, and that's the angular velocity omega. And you can see on this side, if I have s divided by t, that's the velocity, the distance divided by the time, that's my velocity. And then I get the velocity over the radius. And then I'm going to rearrange that equation so that I have it written like this. And this is the equation that relates the, the tangential velocity to the angular velocity. The tangential velocity is simply r times omega, omega being my angular velocity. Okay, so that's a very useful equation. And now we can find an equation that relates the tangential acceleration to the angular acceleration. So this is the idea. I have an object here. It's moving around the circle in this direction. And if it's speeding up or it's slowing down, it's going to have some acceleration. And that acceleration that's causing it to speed up or slow down is the tangential acceleration like that because it's tangential to that curve like that. Now, to derive this relationship, we're going to start out with our definition for our um, angular acceleration, which says that the angular acceleration is alpha divided by the angular velocity over time. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by r, and I'm going to get r times alpha, the tangential, excuse me, the angular acceleration. And then on the top of this equation, you can see here I have r, the radius, times the change in the angular velocity over time. And I can open this side of this equation up over here by saying I have r times alpha is going to be equal to r times the final angular velocity minus r times the initial angular velocity divided by time. Now, you remember in a previous slide, we derived the equation that the velocity, the tangential velocity, is equal to r times the angular velocity. So you can see for this 
term here, I can substitute that in here for each of these, and then I get r times alpha is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity, because each of these r times omega is the velocity. And you can see the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time is just my acceleration, and that's my tangential acceleration. Okay, so that means that the tangential acceleration is equal to r times alpha or r times my angular acceleration. So this is the equation that relates the tangential and the angular acceleration. Once again, you just multiply the rotational term by r. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about, excuse me, talk about the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration is another acceleration that can be acting on the object because if we have an object and it's going around on a circular path like that, we need an acceleration or a force that's going to cause that object to stay on that circular path, even if it's moving at the same speed. And that is what we call the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration points towards the center of the circle. That's the acceleration that keeps the object moving on its curved path. All right. Without that, it would just continue on a straight path. So what we're going to do now to derive this equation is we are going to say that we know that the t centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. You might have seen that before from your work with mechanics. And again, we're going to use this equation, which says that tangential velocity is equal to r times the angular velocity. And I can substitute this term into here because this is v and that's equal to v. And when I do that, I get that my centripetal acceleration is going to be equal to r omega squared over r. And I can simplify this side because that r, I'm going to have r squared when I distribute this through. And one of the r is going to cancel with this r and I'm left with omega squared. And that means that my angular acceleration, excuse me, my centripetal acceleration is going to be equal to r times my angular velocity squared. So this is a very useful equation which you can relate, use to relate the centripetal acceleration and the angular velocity like that. Okay? Now, we have two accelerations we talked about. We talked about the tangential acceleration, which causes that object as it moves around the curve path to either speed up or slow down. And we have our centripetal acceleration, which causes the object to stay on the circular path. And we want to know what is the total acceleration. Well, these are the two equations we derived for the centripetal acceleration and for the tangential acceleration. And you can see here I have a nice right angle here, so I can use my Pythagorean theorem and my trig functions to figure out what is the sum of those two vectors. And the sum of those two vectors, the centripetal and the tangential acceleration, will be the total acceleration of the object. And that is going to be the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So I can just use my a squared plus b squared is c squared. I want to solve for the hypotenuse, so this is my c squared, and this is my a squared and my b squared. And that means that the total acceleration of that object is simply going to be the square root of the centripetal acceleration squared plus the tangential acceleration squared. That will be the magnitude. Now, I also want to know the direction, and that's going to be this angle theta, and I can use my tangent function because the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, the opposite being the tangential, the adjacent being the centripetal, and that is the equation that I can use to find the angle or the direction of that total acceleration. This would be the magnitude, and this would be the angle. All right? Okay, now we're going to do one more thing, and we're going to talk about the frequency and the period, or the period and the frequency. Okay, the frequency is the symbol F. It's the number of cycles in one second. It's the number of times something would go around on a circular path in one second. The period is the time it would take to complete one cycle, or the time it would take to go around one time. Okay, by definition, we say that, we just said that the frequency is the number of cycles per second, and the period is the time for one cycle. Those two things, the frequency and the period, are inversely proportional to each other. The frequency is one over the period, the period is one over the frequency, the frequency is measured in hertz, and the period is measured in seconds. All right, we can use those relationships to calculate the angular velocity because the angular velocity omega is also equal to 2 times pi times the frequency. And if we don't know the frequency but we do know the period, then we can say that omega is equal to 2 times pi divided by the period t like that.
Okay, so those are equations that come in handy if you're talking about the frequency and you happen to know the frequency and you want to calculate omega. All right, so there you go. We went through a complete, I think that's a pretty complete introduction to everything you need for starting your investigations and your work with rotational motion. This is an overview of all the equations we just went over. Okay, we had two types of accelerations. We had the centripetal acceleration, which is r times omega squared. We had the tangential acceleration, which is r times alpha squared, the angular acceleration. And then we had the distance, and we have this relationship between the distance and the angular displacement. We had the speed, and we had this relationship between the speed and the angular velocity. And then again, we had the acceleration, and this is our equation that shows us the relationship between the tangential acceleration and the angular acceleration. So there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.